Minister, I pose this question to you to clear up any ambiguity that is out there. And this has arisen uh, since the uh, Government of Scotland communicated with uh, either yourself or will communicate with the government uh, about Rockhall. And then, of course, there were views that uh, the agreement of 2013 in relation to the e exclusive economic zone. So I think I wanted to give you an opportunity to clarify the position and uh, look forward to your reply. Understood. Yeah, Deputy, thank you for, for raising this question because it is important to clarify it. And it's been a high profile issue in the media for the last couple of weeks uh, and I've been very direct in terms of my response to it as has Minister Michael Creed uh, but I know you've raised concerns and I know you understand the fishing industry's concerns well. Uh, the exclusive economic zone or EEZ uh, is the body of water which stretches from 12 nautical miles offshore uh, out to a distance of 200 miles. Uh, the seabed beneath the EEZ is the continental shelf largely due to efforts made by Ireland through the 1970s International law is now clear that uninhabitable rocks, such as Rockall, have no entitlement to a continental shelf or an EEZ, and so sovereignty over such a rock is irrelevant for the purposes of establishing boundaries between continental shelves and EEZs of neighbouring states. Sovereignty uh, and uh, uh, sovereignty, uh, and whether such a rock uh, has a 12-mile 12-mile territorial sea are separate issues that do not arise in establishing boundaries between continental shelves and EEZs. The issue of Rockall, therefore, did not arise in the 2013 agreement, uh, as, it as it was not relevant. The 2013 agreement, built on a 1988 agreement between Ireland and the, U and the UK, that had already established continental shelf boundaries and provides that those boundaries, slightly adjusted to ensure that no waters were lost to the high seas, shall also be the EEZ boundaries. This created a single maritime boundary between 12 and 200 miles uh, in the water and on the seabed beneath. As you are aware, Deputy, Ireland has never made any claims to Rockall, nor have we recognised British claims to sovereignty over it. Nothing in either agreement altered that position or represented a departure from our long-held view. Nor does either agreement have any implication for the present difficulties, difficulties between Ireland and Scotland over fishing rights around Rockall. Thank you, Tonish, to the balance As of your reply will be included in the official record, Deputy Gallagher. Uh, well, I think it's important, uh, Tanish, uh, that uh, you had an opportunity to clarify this for all of us because um, whether it was intentional or otherwise, the impression was given that in 2013, without us knowing that we had forfeited our claim, which, which we obviously, obviously haven't. Now, in relation to, to Rock Hall, uh, what's your view now of the uh, statement uh, and the letters to the Irish authorities uh, stating that they had exclusive rights? Round Rock Hall, a 12 mile limit, which of course uh, we've never recognised. Uh, and I uh, support the government uh, in their uh, view that our boats should continue to fish there. Uh, we have a right there for decades. But what intrigues me is that a, a meeting took place at the highest level between the Tisha and the First Secretary, Nicholas Sargent, and it wasn't even on the agenda, despite the fact that letters have been exchanged and meetings have taken place uh, over the two-year period. So where stands that now? Yeah, um, Deputy, first of all, in terms of the technical answer, I'll make sure that you get it in writing, just so you... Um, um, but can I just say that... Um, this issue was raised with Ireland first in 2017 uh, by Scotland. Uh, it was raised with me by uh, my counterpart in the Scottish Government, uh, Fiona Hislop, last September, uh, when she indicated that the Scottish Government had made a decision uh, that they would be enforcing the rules as they understood them uh, in the 12-mile limit around Rockall, which they regarded as uh, an exclusive fishing zone for British and Scottish boats. Uh, I made it very clear to her that I disagreed with that interpretation uh, and that the waters around Rockall uh, were waters that were subject to the common fisheries policy, uh, that quotas had been allocated, haddock in this case, 
uh, uh, for, uh, for Irish boats uh, and indeed, of course, British boats uh, also. Um, and uh, it, was, tarnished, so it, it was in the week subsequent to the Nicola Sturgeon uh, uh, meeting with the Taoiseach that we got a letter from Fiona Hislop confirming that they were going to proceed with enforcement within a week. And that's what triggered uh, the quite high Time profile disagreement tarnished, uh, on this issue, which is subsequently, I'm glad to say, now, I hope, being dealt with through diplomacy uh, rather than anything else. Yeah, well, I, I can appreciate the importance of diplomacy, but I still do believe that either yourself or the Minister for uh, Fisheries uh, should uh, be in consultation with your counterpart so in order that there's clarification, because the language that was being used on that Friday and Saturday of two weeks ago uh, it was quite serious, taking this, uh, what I would think, unilateral illegal action at the time. But thankfully, uh, it's toned down now. Uh, and hopefully uh, it can be resolved. Will, will the, have the European Union been informed by us uh, of this situation, and are they taking uh, an interest uh, in this case? Because it's European uh, quotas that are that have been fished there. And could I ask one final question, Akin Corla? Uh, where stands this uh, after uh, Brexit? Well, of course, if there's a deal, so hopefully something can be resolved. But if there's no deal, uh, could we be excluded from those waters? Thank you. Tony, you can conclude. Well, first of all, the, um, uh, the European Commission is aware of, of this issue. Um, uh, uh, but I think the most important thing uh, is that we have worked to de-escalate tension in relation to this issue. This should not be dealt with through threats of enforcement. Uh, it should be dealt with by through two friendly neighbours talking to each other. We have a different interpretation of the law on, on this issue uh, and the, the, uh, the fishing entitlements that go with that uh, around Rockall. Uh, and um, the Secretary General of my department has met his counterpart in Dublin in recent days and, and they will be meeting again in Scotland uh, in the coming weeks uh, uh, to try to, uh, uh, to, uh, to find a way forward that doesn't involve the kind of language that we heard um, in the last two weeks.